Hello and welcome back to our discussion on distillation. In this module we are going to expand on our discussion on binary distillation from the last module and expand that into the situation where we want to draw more than two cuts from a distillation column. We want to draw multiple cuts, maybe three, four, or more. An example of this is a crude distillation unit where we take crude oil and send that into an atmospheric distillation column and we will draw multiple cuts, multiple different uh, streams, all with different boiling points and boiling ranges from one distillation column. So let's go ahead and get started. To start, let's talk about the crude. The crude will come in typically from tankage. It may go through a desalter first. A desalter's job is to mix that crude with a little bit of warm water and it gives it a chance to separate and removes salts which can cause downstream corrosion. Um, and desalter operation is a different topic, uh, deserves a topic of its own. And so we'll jump right into the crude unit that takes a stream up oh, and I see I got my wrong pen selected so let's try that again. We're going to take our crude in here crude in here. And then I am not going to draw the whole distillation unit because the distillation unit is uh, a big unit and um, what I probably should do is move the crude feed down just a little bit if I can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send that crude into our distillation column and it will go into the bottom of the distillation column like so. And I'll draw it like a distillation unit. I'm going to leave a lot of stuff off, but that crude ultimately enters that tower at maybe 700 degrees Fahrenheit. It might be a little bit more than that. It might be 750 or so, but it can't be too much more than that because if that oil gets hotter, too much hotter than 700 degrees, it will coke excessively and it will coke in the tower, it will coke in furnace tubes, and you will have a short run light. Uh, run length on that unit. So 6, 700 to 750 is about the maximum temperature uh, for the feed to that tower. I've heard as high as 765, but that's about the highest I've heard of. In that distillation column, <coughs> it is a, just a little different than a binary distillation column <coughs> in that it does not have a reboiler at the bottom to supply heat to the tower. It doesn't need one because the crude comes in at such a high temperature all the energy that's needed to make separations and to split the crude into different cuts comes in with the crude charge. Off the top of the distillation column, that is the coolest part of the distillation unit. Um, and it has the product that has the lowest boiling range. And off the top of that is gas. And the gas comes from a couple of sources. A little bit of the gas is dissolved in the crude when you purchase it, and so there might be a little butane dissolved in that crude, maybe even a little propane. But part of that gas comes from the furnace, and the fact that we heated that crude up to 700 degrees, we can start breaking a few molecules um, and breaking off some small gas-like molecules from that crude at those high temperatures. And so part of that we made, and part of it came in with the crude. Now. In a real crude unit, there's going to be multiple streams, such as light virgin naphtha and heavy virgin naphtha and a kerosene cut and a diesel cut and, and a heavy gas oil cut. But let's simplify that for our first discussion, and we'll simplify that quite a bit into just a few basic cuts. Um, let's draw our top cut as gasoline. And in a real refinery, that gasoline goes out to a couple other units, a hydrotreating unit to remove sulfur. Some of that gasoline might go to a reformer to improve octane. And then ultimately, that gasoline will go to sales tanks, uh, where people will put that into their gasoline engines. The next cut down um, could be a caro cut if your refinery draws kerosene as a product, and most do. But let's simplify that a little bit, and we'll just go right to diesel. You don't need to draw kerosene because kerosene is kind of the back end of gasoline and the front end of diesel. And so if you choose to make just gasoline and diesel, you can do that. But uh, kerosene is 
frequently a premium product and so people will frequently draw that um, and at the cost of a little bit of gasoline and a little bit diesel to make a premium product and then you have that and then if this was uh, we're going to simplify quite a bit here the next stream down is really two streams it would be a heavy gas oil stream and a vacuum gas oil stream and this would have to happen in a vacuum unit but let's simplify a little bit and let's call this cat feed And that cat feed is too heavy to be diesel. It has too high of a boiling point. In fact, that cat feed would be a jelly on a very cold day. So if it was zero degrees outside or 20 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, that cat feed would be kind of a dark greenish jelly, um, much too heavy for any consumer use. And so that's why we sent it to a fluid catalytic cracking unit, an FCC unit, where we can catalytically, catalytically crack that material into gasoline and diesel, which are products that our customers want to buy. And then next product down would be Resid. And again, that takes more than a single distillation column to do that. That would take uh, atmospheric unit and a vacuum unit. And so I have both a vacuum unit and an atmospheric unit kind of combined uh, symbolically in this one distillation tower and so we'll call this Resid. And Resid is a very heavy material, very high boiling and you're familiar with uh, Resid in some cases because you see it on roads. Uh, Resid is a component of asphalt which we make roads out of and we make asphalt shingles for houses out of it. But Resid by itself is too heavy even for those uses. Um, it's 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 too um, thick. It would be brittle, too brittle for a road. And so to make it a little bit softer and more resilient, to make asphalt, we need to add some of the molecules from the cat feed stream into the resid to make asphalt. If you choose not to make asphalt as a product at your refinery, you might send that resid to a coker. And in a coker, we heat that resid up to about 900 degrees. We put it in a large drum and let it sit. And in that large drum, at those high temperatures, it cokes. And when something cokes, what happens is the molecules sit there and they vibrate at high energy and sometimes they break. And if they break, into smaller pieces, some of those smaller pieces might be gasoline or diesel, and because the coker runs at low pressure, maybe only 25 pounds of pressure, that gasoline or diesel will vaporize out of the resid pool in the coker, and then we can recover that product. Um, if the it doesn't crack into a lighter material, it'll stay behind and it'll form a coke, which is essentially just carbon, much like coal and then that will be cut out and used either for uh, fuel for a power plant or maybe it'll be used to make anodes for steel making or for aluminum making. And so that is how multiple cuts are drawn from a crude unit. Again this is a simplified drawing. This tower right here is really represents uh, an atmospheric tower, an ATM tower, atmospheric tower, and a vac tower. And so really two distillation columns that I've represented as a single tower here just to, for the purposes of discussion. And then in the next module what we'll do is we'll talk about the boiling ranges of these streams and we'll talk about the boiling range of gasoline, diesel, cat feed, and resid. And I'll give you a little different way to look at these cuts and try to get an understanding of how cut points can be adjusted to change the properties of your streams. That's all for now. Thank you.